We're back in Houdini with the file that we built during the last part. And let's dive into the geometry of that polygonized image. So we still have spray paint set up to scatter those points. But what I want to do instead is use the scatter to generate the points for the triangles again, but scatter only points on the edges of our image. Let us duplicate this attribute from map node, just copy and paste it again. So go to the top view and maybe disable the backdrop so we can see something. Okay, so that is our image map. And what I need to do is rebuild that kernel. We could do it in VEX or we could do it in VOPS. And today what I'm going to do is build it in VOPS. So I'm going to drop down a point VOP. Wire that up. And go inside. What I want to do first for each point, find the adjacent points. So for each point, as you remember in the kernel, we need to look up its eight adjacent points. I'm going to do that with a node called PC find, which for each given point position looks up its nearest neighbors. And you can specify how many neighbors it finds and in which radius it should look for those points. So I'll wire up the point position for a current point. And you need to tell PC find where the points are coming from. And in our case, they are coming from the input one. So the input one is just that input here. So I wired that up to the file input. Then I'm going to tell it how many points it should find. And in our case, we need to know that there's a special quirk about the PC find node. If I apply the PC find node the way that I do now, it will find the point that we're looking from as well as the adjacent points. So instead of looking for the eight adjacent points, we'd rather want to look for nine points. And that in automatically includes um, our center point. So it'll find the center point and those eight adjacent points. And what PC find will spit out is an array. So an array is basically a list of numbers. In our case, a list of point IDs. So in Houdini, when you go in here, <laughs> and that's my mesh is pretty dense here. You can see that each point has got its own individual number here. And that's called the point ID and they are unique for each point. So what PC find will spit out is a list of those point IDs and they are ordered by distance. So what I know here is that the first entry on my list will be the center point, followed by all the adjacent points. So in order to rebuild our kernel, First thing I want to do is isolate that center point and multiply it by eight. And I will be able to isolate my center point with a node called get element. So I'm gonna give it an array input here that we have and I need to tell it which index to extract. So each entry in my array has an index. So the first entry has got an index of zero, second entry has got an index of one, third got an index of two, etc., etc. That's because in computer sciences, you usually start to count from zero and not from one. Okay, so my first element is the element with the index, index zero, and that's gonna spit out a value, an integer value with the point ID. So what I wanna do now is get the color value of that point. Uh, and I can access that with a node called point, uh, import point attribute here. So I want to import the attribute color that's called CD color diffuse. Um, points are coming from this input here. The color is a vector, so red, green and blue values. And the point number is what we got out of our array. So that should import the color from the first point from the center point. What I want to do now with the color is multiply it times eight for the center value. So I'm going to add that with the multiply node. Oh no, I want to use a multiply constant node so I can directly adjust the multiplier here. Just going to input eight. Signature is going to be a vector here. Hook that up. So I just took care of the center point. Again, what I did was find all the adjacent pixels to one given pixel and the center pixel and extract the center pixel, get that center pixels color and multiply that by eight. 
What I'm going to do now is just highlight these three nodes and copy them and paste them again. And I want to do pretty much the same for the other elements. So for element one, that's the first adjacent point. I want to import its color and multiply that not by eight, but by minus one. So in this, I can copy another seven times and give each point its corresponding index. So let's set that to two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this bunch of node extracts all the adjacent pixels. So for all the adjacent pixels, I also got their color value and multiplied the color value by minus one. And all I need to do now is add all those values with the center value. And that's going to be done by an add node, which I drop down here and just wire up. Let's put it up here. And just wire up all these outputs. Okay, so I now have my values summed up here. At the moment, just for testing purposes, I can write the output directly to the color. And as you see here, we have what looks like an edge detection, a very sensitive edge detection, but we have one. So let's go up one level and in here, adjust the uh, color mapping because we, I think we cranked that up in order to get a shading that we liked, but I wanna reset it so our algorithm doesn't find so many edges. What I do in the end is um, I do not want to write out that color value, but I want a rather a density value. So one value and not three like for RGB. And in order to convert a vector like an RG and B value into a single float value, what I'm gonna use here is a length node. So that gives me the value um, the magnitude of the vectors or the magnitude of those three individual values and we'll just sum it up into one float. I'll do that by dropping down a length node, input that vector here and just to see what we're working on just pipe that out to our color so it gets displayed and I have black and white values here. So when I go to my geometry spreadsheet now and check those color values I see that they're ranging from almost five to zero. And just to be able to control the density distribution a bit better, I will add a ramp node to this. So let me dive in here and add a ramp parameter node to that. Set it to spline ramp. And what it did is created an interface here with a ramp so I can map those density values. I can remap them. I'd like to set those points to B splines so I can adjust the mapping of my colors. And in order to prevent those um, many edges being found here, what I can do before edge detection is actually blur those values a bit. And that's done with a smooth node. Just gonna add that before the, nope. I'm gonna add it after the image map and before the point bop. And I have to tell it to smooth out the color diffuse. So that kind of alleviated that a bit. Just gonna check in here and um, dial in those image values a bit. And go back into the point fob because at the moment um, I'm directly outputting my density value to my color, which I don't want. So I will add what's called a bind export node. And that's going to create another attribute and export a parameter to it. In our case, it will export this parameter and um, we'll call it density, the attribute it exports it to so density. And we'll delete that node. What we need to do now is to transfer those density values we just generated onto our main geometry stream. So that's the stream with the proper image mapping and the 
proper color values. And the way I can transfer a value is with an attribute transfer. So, And I'm going to hook up the uh, geometry where I want to transfer the attributes to here. And this is the geometry where the attributes should come from. So when I go in here, I would like to transfer point attributes. And what I'd like to transfer is called density. So when I highlight this, nothing has changed visually because the color is still coming from that node in that stream. I'm going to feed that into the scatter sub. So what I see now is I generate my density, but my density attribute has changed. It's not called color anymore, but I created a separate one called density. So that should scatter only along what we've generated here. And let's highlight later part in our stream. And yes, we can see it finds most edges here. It finds even the outline of the hat and scatters points accordingly. So we have just written our very own image processing kernel and our very own edge detection. And depending on the image, this works quite nicely. There are some things that you can tweak. Um, in our very simple setup, the main parameters are in the smoothing and in the color mapping of the original image. But although it's a simple setup, um, it's a very powerful one. It's rather basic, but it can detect most edges in an image and will scatter points accordingly and um, yield many really, really nice results. So if you create any artwork using that technique, please let us know. We're really excited to see what you guys come up with. Cheers and see you soon.